Hello everyone, my name is Sik, and welcome to another unusual video for this channel, because today we are playing Spelunky. Now for those of you who have never heard of this game before, Spelunky is a roguelike platformer. And that means that you are expected to die over and over and over again. And I've done quite a many times. But um, eventually the idea is that you will reach the end of the, we of the, <laughs> of the world. Essentially, there are four worlds and you have to progress through four maps in each before you can reach the final boss and I've played this game for over 150 hours. I managed to beat that boss twice. I've reached him uh, several more times, but usually I died there and um, Overall though, it's a very cool game. It's it's randomly generated, but all the maps are Generated in a very fair way. So usually when you die, it's your own fault or practically Every time you die, it's uh, it's your own fault. As you can see, um, well, we have this little head over here, and that is actually sort of like a turret trap. So what we can do, because they respond to um, <laughs> to movement in front of them, we can pick up a skull, just yeah, drop it down in front, and that will actually trigger the trap as well. So there's always something that you can do to trigger these traps and get around them, usually if you don't muck about because you can also very easily you know only have like a little vase as you can see right there and if you manage to destroy it without actually triggering a trap first well then you might have to try to find another way to uh <laughs> to trigger these traps so for every map you have several enemies and they sort of fairly weak and, uh, and innocent like these bats and this and a few spiders over here not a big threat and the way in which they come at you is predictable so they will always fly at you at a certain angle um, the spiders will only drop on top of you once they uh, once you are underneath them and when they are at the bottom they will always jump in predictable arcs right um, along the way you will also find gold you can see a little gold bar down to the bottom right there and these gems are oh, god damn it no Oh man, I did not want that to happen, because now I kind of want to reach this damsel, right? Because if I save this damsel, she will give me one HP extra. That is very potent, because in the top left you can see my HP, I only have four. I also have a limited supply of bombs. I had four, I've used up two, and I have four ropes as well. Now, the thing is, these things are very limited. They're not easy to find, so you have to either buy them, or get lucky enough to find a few of them, but most of the time you won't have a whole lot of them. So where and when you use these things is critical to success. All right, we can skip through this. Anyway, the goal is to find as much gold and gems and stuff like that as you can, because they count towards your score if you manage to make it all the way to the end. Um, however, along the way you will find stores like this one. And here you can purchase stuff. So I could purchase a compass which shows me the end of the level uh, for 4,000 gold. I could buy a web gun for 2,000. I could buy a bomb box of 10 for 10,000 and it will give me 10 bombs. Or I can buy a jetpack and the jetpack is actually the most powerful item in the game. So I'm going to try to save up for this a little bit. Multiple things are going on however. I can't just take my sweet time on this map because after about two and a half minutes on each level uh, a ghost will appear and this ghost cannot be killed it cannot be bartered with there's nothing you can do if it touches you you die so you have to be careful here let's see let's drop a rope over here i could make this fall pretty easily but i need to get back up ah god damn it wrong button that's a waste of a rope there i want to throw a bomb into the web of the big ass spider because if that spider dies and it did it drops a jar of glue and now I have sticky bombs instead of bombs that will bounce off walls and stuff like that and fall back to the ground and these things are very good because I can attach them to enemies or wall pieces and stuff like that and just blow a hole for myself and unfortunately I did not make enough money here to purchase the jetpack but I do need some more bombs so I'm going to use one more rope and I'm going to climb back up and let's see yep I'm going to go back to the store and I'm going to buy myself a box of bombs. See, we have 4,000 left. Actually, the compass could be very, very useful indeed. 
but I'm not going to buy it right now. Maybe later on if we encounter it again. Or maybe we are lucky enough to find one. That would be even better. I'm not going to use a bomb to get to the damsel, however, because we're doing pretty good health-wise. And the only other reason you could want to save a damsel is to sacrifice her on, a, on an altar, because then there's a blood god who will give you special items and stuff like that. And if you sacrifice two damsels, you can actually get a skull cup, which will uh, basically gather the blood of your enemies. <laughs> and if the, if the cup gets full, it actually gives you a second bar or um, an extra HP as well. So sacrifice two damsels will, of course, make sure that you will not get those two HP. But you get a cup that allows you to gather blood, and that blood will give you AP once the cup is full. Found another store, another compass. Uh, not entirely sure. Not really a big priority for me right now. But what makes this game so cool is that it's completely randomly generated, but it's always fair. And there's always rules that you know and can expect. Actually, we found, just found a compass right now. So it's a good thing that we did not buy the compass at the store. Usually the compass is, is uh, fairly easy to find, I think. So I don't really bother with buying it too much until I am later into the game. Also, I see another box over here. I think that is worth a bomb to see what's inside. That might be very powerful stuff inside, actually. We found the glass. The glasses. And glasses allow you to see gems in, uh, in the ground, basically. Doesn't appear to be any around here. Or I think, yeah, they actually, yeah, they help, to see, they help you to see uh, gems in the ground. And they also make uh, dark maps a little bit lighter. Because that's a random thing that you can encounter. Oop. These guys are annoying. <laughs> I'm going to see if I can kill him. I need to hit him three times. So one more time he will be dead. And I see on the little wall below me. Um, actually the, the sign for a sacrificial altar. So we're going to want to do this. I can actually sacrifice dead bodies as well. Though they're not worth a whole lot of points. But uh, yeah, we have the goddess Kali. Kali accepts my sacrifice. Very pleased with that. If we can find a damsel and bring her back here, we should be able to sacrifice her as well. And she is worth a lot of points. Like I said, you need to sacrifice two uh, damsels to Kali. And then you will get a prize. Or you will get a prize for the first time you sacrifice something to Kali as well. Ooh, see if we managed to make this jump. Yes, we did. Excellent. Spike shoes. I will be buying those. I will also be buying uh, a glove. And that is it. The glove allows me to throw stuff quite far. The spike boots will allow me to kill people or any, almost anything instantly when I jump on top of them. And also there's an ice world and there will be blocks of ice and you will, they will be slippery unless you wear these shoes. Anyway, we completed the first four levels of the mines and now we will go on to the next area. And now we have met Tunnelman because I'm on a new computer. I started this game uh, basically I installed this game, this is the first time I booted it up in a long long time and since this is a new PC my progress has been reset and we will encounter Tunnelman at every world and he will ask us for stuff so we can say oh hello there I'm Tunnelman I was digging a shortcut but a large boulder is blocking my path can you give me a bomb so I can blow it up we will donate a bomb and now from the main menu we will be able to access the jungle world uh, without having to go for the mines first. Basically, this guy allows you to get shortcuts to different worlds. But for the third world and the fourth world and stuff like that, things become a lot harder. You know, he wants he doesn't want to have a bomb, he wants to have uh, a special item, usually. Something that is a lot harder to transport. Now, this is quite dark. And that is not because that is part of a... Oh, that is not the way this map is supposed to be. All right, and I am already quite fucked. <laughs> this is a special thing that can happen on any world. Unfortunately, I had to jump into the water there. Crap! God damn it! Piss off. And yeah, every once in a while, one of these maps will end up dark, and that makes things really hard to see unless you can carry a burning torch with you. Unfortunately, the water extinguished it, so I am a little bit fucked, and we are going to have to try to make this work. Ooh, nice. 
Those little golden scarabs are worth a lot of money. I think they're worth like 5,000 each. So everyone that you manage to hit is actually really, really damn powerful. That's a lot of money right there. There we go. Got this guy as well. Let's take this uh, jar, break it against the wall. Luckily, we were able to get through this map pretty easily. These jars may also contain enemies, however, there can be a snake or a spider inside, so if you break this jar while walking over it, you will actually get damage from it as well, so it is a risk. You should be aware that there might always be something inside, so what you generally want to do is uh, break it while you're standing next to it instead of on top of it, or you want to throw it somewhere. These sticky traps are also really goddamn annoying. Some of these skeletons that you can see over here are actually... Um, can be alive as well. Oh, this guy is a... Uh, good. We already sacrificed one of these bodies to Kali, so let's sacrifice this one as well. She seems pleased, but she's still not quite happy because she's not giving us a gift for, you know, sacrificing two corpses. It's not, not, very, it's not very potent. Right, we have 14 bombs, I'm not going to buy another one. We're just going to move on past here. If you can find a damsel, that would be very good. Right, we have an orange frog. They happen to explode. So, you know, the first time you play this game, it is extremely hard because you don't know what to expect from most of these enemies and they will end up killing you a lot. But uh, once you figure them out, you can find ways to play around with them and use them. You can actually pick up that frog and throw it somewhere if you're careful as well. Got that monkeys. The monkeys are really annoying because they don't really damage you, but they will jump onto your back. They will rummage through your backpack and steal stuff. Oh. And they will occasionally... Ah, uh, goddammit, he stole a bomb. Jesus. Alright. Sometimes they will trip you up as well. And if they happen to trip you up on, side one of the, or on top of one of these vines, it means you will die. Because you will fall down onto one of those traps there. And this is terrible. That guy impaled himself on spikes. <laughs> Ooh, we have another uh, altar for Kali. That was really nice. But ah, and we have a damsel as well. Excellent. All right, let's put a sticky bomb on there. Let's also get rid of this. I'm going to put a sticky bomb on that one. I should be very careful with not of uh, trying not to damage uh, the altar to Kali, because damaging it will actually incur her wrath, and she will fuck you up. First time that happens, she will um, call in a bunch of spiders or um, creatures, basically. That's pretty easy to deal with. Second time you do it, however, it's a lot harder, because then she will actually uh, put a ball and chain on you. <laughs> and the ball and chain is quite fucked up, because it's quite heavy, it means you can't jump very far, if at all. And... Let's see, let's trigger these sticky traps. There we go. Let's sacrifice his body as well. She seems happy. Still not giving me... You know, I'm, I'm hoping that if I sacrifice enough of these dead bodies, that I will actually be able to... Um, oh, God damn it! Please don't trip me up. Alright. We just stole some gold. That's annoying enough, but... Nothing we can't deal with. If I get below them, they will jump for me. So I need to try to keep on top of them. There we go. Good. God damn it! Yeah, there we go. We had a snake inside the pot, and that cost me one HP. It's not a whole lot because we still have four, but on the long run, it can really hurt you. So, let's go to world four of the jungle world, and hopefully, there's going to be another altar here. Because the further we go, uh, the more bloodless our enemies are going to become. So they will damage you a lot more, but they will have less blood to give you in return. And we have some of these things. Also, every once in a while, you can find something like this. And these are basically relics. They're worth like 10,000 gold, so you definitely want to keep them. But in the in the, in the <laughs> in the mine world, they will actually trigger a boulder, like Indiana Jones. You have this big-ass boulder coming down on you. And it is absolutely terrible. Um, you don't want that. Let's see if we can... Yeah, we can get rid of you. Good. Because they will, the boulders, they will destroy huge parts of the map. And if they end up hurting a shopkeeper, well, <laughs> all, the, 
all the shopkeepers in the game from that point forward are going to be your enemy and they are wielding a big ass shotgun and it does enough damage to kill you in one go. All it needs is one hit. If you have 4 HP, one hit is all he needs to kill you. And these guys are very fast, they're going to be jumping all over the place. And all in all, it's just going to be a very unpleasant time and it is most likely going to end up with you dead. Oh, piranhas, get away from me for fuck's sake. Ah, oh, that cost me one HP. Damn it. He did drop a boomerang, however, so we can pick up that boomerang and use it for ourselves. So along the way, you want to try to get these things as much as possible. You know, that as much items uh, as you can get, because they're all very helpful. Alright, we're in the ice world, and because we have the spiky shoes, we actually don't have any real trouble here. That was good. I also noticed a, another sacrificial altar, and I see another damsel. So first things first is I'm going to pick up the damsel, and I'm going to use her as a human sacrifice to get my blood bowl, finally. Ah, oh, goddammit, there is a mine on top of it. Oh man, good. I managed to pick it up, because... Oh, no, 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 no! Oh, goddammit. Ah, oh, this is so annoying. <laughs> How I'm going to... How I'm, uh, I'm not sure how I'm going to pick her up. There we go. Alright, I had to knock her out of the way first. Um, let's use a rope. I need to get back up there. <laughs> of course, once picked up, these damsels will walk around if you let them go. But there we go. We now finally have our blood bowl. Now the question is, can we still get some actual blood here? Because most of these things, yeah, it, it does give us a little bit of blood. Oh crap. <laughs> Alright, the red arrow you can see on the left hand side of the screen actually uh, shows us the end of the map. And the ice world is unique in that it has a bottomless pit at the bottom of every map. Oop. Oh nice, we got some blood out of the snake. Good. As you can see in the top left, there is a little icon for the skull, skull cap right now and the eyes are full. But it's not quite full yet, so we don't get an HP quite yet. But I'm working on it. I'm going to milk these motherfuckers for blood as much as I can. Let's see. Ooh, another altar. And another damsel. Hmm. Alright. Let's see. We can use the cape to float around a little bit. I'm going to sacrifice her as well. But actually, another thing that you can do, you can hit her with the whip three times before she dies. So I'm going to drop her down here. And every time she gets up, I'm going to whip her. I'm going to whip her two times. This allows her still to be alive. But it also gave me some much needed blood. <laughs> I know it's evil, but it's also very effective. Alright, let's pick up a rope, throw it down, or throw it up actually. Sacrifice her as well. And if you sacrifice uh, four damsels, to Kali, you will actually get a tremendous amount of hit points in return. Ooh, damn it. These UFOs as well are really, <laughs> really annoying because they will explode upon contact once you are hit, once they are hit. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, so close. Oh man. I mean, it's crazy because I've been playing now for a while, like we've been going at this for like 15 minutes, and I've seen videos of people finishing this game in under 4 minutes. They're incredibly fast. The speed running for this is absolutely insane. Oh, oh crap. Yeah, that's another thing. You have these um, purplished uh, stones, and once you step on top of them, they will actually fall down like, like you see right there. And if you're standing on top of it, of underneath it actually, it will kill you. So that is absolutely terrible. You definitely don't want that to happen. Oh god damn it, really? I kind of wanted to get over in that ice wall there because there was a lot of gems and stuff like that. Alright, UFOs also attack you if you're underneath them, so that's another thing to keep in mind. Let's get this damsel as well, float down a little bit. This is really useful because it makes sure that we don't get any floating damage, or any falling damage, <laughs> I mean. Not floating damage, floating doesn't hurt, floating is awesome. Um, yeah, let's make this jump as well. I don't see another altar towards Kali, so let's put her down here. Let's milk her blood a little bit. And actually, you can choose the appearance 
of the damsel as well. It can be a guy, it can be a woman, it can also be a, a cute little pug dog. And I can't bear to beat a pug. And actually, you know, I, I, I'm not a guy who beats women. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I think that's horrible as well. But in a game, I feel less horrible about people dying than I feel about dogs dying, you know? And so I don't care so much about the damsels. And yeah. <laughs> what can I say? It's an evil act. It's never going to be anything but an evil act. Oh crap. Another really cool thing is these yetis don't actually directly damage you either. They actually pick you up and throw you. But throwing you on a map with a bottomless pit at the bottom is obviously a very bad idea. It can lead to all sorts of nasty stuff. Alright, we have a... Another sacrificial altar. So let's pick up these bodies, drop them down. I want to sacrifice them as well. There we go. Damsel, you're going with me as well. Let's sacrifice her. You feel invigorated. Now we have 15 HP. That's really good. All right, let's sacrifice these bodies as well. It's not going to give us any more. Oh crap! No. Ah. Uh. You have angered Kali, but she still seems ecstatic with me. All right, that's good. <laughs> oh man, that was terrible. All right, let's float on top of his head. There we go. Maybe the skeleton is alive. Nope. If he's alive and you drop on top of him, they will actually die. So that's not a big deal. All right, world four. I might actually be able to get all the way to the boss, but it's it's taking me so long to get here, and this is actually a terrible, terrible, very hard map. And there we have Anubis, and actually, oh crap, that used up a parachute because we were about to receive fall damage. <laughs> well, no matter. Since I have the cape, the parachute isn't going to be all that useful to me anyway. Oop, get all the blood. Oh crap, no! <laughs> Those things are horrible as well, like, you can defeat them if you manage to land on top of their heads, but if you don't, well, it's quite hard. Alright, that thing is triggered. Oh man, there's a block over there, like a block with eyes, or a block with an eye, and those things, if you get close to them, they will actually um, fly around, they will actually f fly in your direction, and if you don't manage to get out of the way, they will actually crush you to death. Like that. Like, this is not the best example, because there's a lot of space, but in areas with almost no space, those things are fucking horrible to deal with. Like, really, really bad. Alright. Another damsel. I am not going to pick this one up because here is a trap that I have absolutely no clue how to deal with. It is an absolute nightmare. All right. We do need to get out of here though, so actually maybe I shouldn't have gone for that damsel. I think that's a pretty bad idea at this point. It took me another rope. And that is never good. That thing has been activated. We have a golden gate here as well. The only way to get inside of it, however, it leads to a special world. It leads to the golden city. And as you might imagine, getting there is extremely valuable and very good for your score. Ooh, that was a nice sacrifice of blood there, but I missed it. Basically, there are in each world there is a special item that you can find. Starting in the mines, there is a special item that you can find, which is like an eye of uh, an Egyptian eye or something like that. And it allows you to see gems in the ground, but it will also alert you to a special entrance on the second world. And that second entrance will lead you to a special world full of merchants. And that is the only place where you can purchase an item that allows you to die one time and come back alive. However, you need to hold on to that one because you actually need to sacrifice yourself on the third, third world on the third map, where you had the big, um, ba basically the big totem head. Because if you die on that world, the totem head allows you a place to respawn. You will actually spawn inside of that totem head, and that will lead you to another special entrance. That will lead you to another area with a special um, world, essentially. All right. Oh, I just got out of there in time. Now you could see the big deal. <laughs> Of getting out away from those thing, things. All right, I need to drop in here without actually holding on to the side of that other tiki head. There we go. Oh, so close. All right, getting closer. Four out of three. 
uh, we are going on to the last part of the fourth world. So we will actually reach the boss if I don't fuck this up on the next level. But yeah, anyway, my point is there's a lot of secrets here that you will only find out over time and a lot of trial and error. There are secrets in this game that I haven't even found in over 150 hours of playing. And I doubt I ever will find all of them. <laughs> but yeah, that one, the one sequence that I just described is actually very powerful. Ooh, this is the final boss. This is Olmec's Lair. And I'm pretty sure I am going to die. Because really the only time I've managed to defeat this boss was if I had a jetpack, which I do not have at the moment. Oh crap. Oh. See, the thing is, there is a lava pit at the bottom here. And we need to get this big giant head, that is the, that is the boss fight. We need to get him to drop into the lava. And it is insanely hard to do. It is really hard to do. You can actually jump on top of him, no problem, but of course that's not going to help us in the long run. So I, the only thing I know how to do is probably make sure... Oh crap. Oh man, and he, every once in a while he spawns these enemies as well. It's absolutely terrible. Of course all the head points in the world don't matter if this guy drops on top of our head because we're just going to be dead. He will only crush one block at a time however, so that is good at least. The only thing that I know how to do right now is make this area as wide as possible so that we have some space to jump around. Oh crap. Oh fuck. I will be... Oh no! <sighs> there you go. <laughs> we are dead. It is game over. And... Yeah. The only choice left is to try again from the very start. We could go back to the mines and see if we could make another time. See if we can get our hands on a jetpack or if you can make it to the secret worlds and stuff like that. Uh, actually there is also a secret that leads you to another world that I have never seen I think which is hell or actually I might have reached it one time. Yeah I think I reached hell one time because basically this is the easy boss <laughs> and I've only managed to beat the easy boss two times in over 150 hours and there is a hard boss which I've never encountered and I can only imagine what kind of a hell that is going to put me through. <laughs> anyway, that is the video for Spelunky. So if you want to see more of this, because this game actually does have daily challenges, if you would like to see me take these daily challenges, leave a like and a comment below, and I will try to do my best on them. Anyway, that's it for this video. So as I said, um, leave a like or a comment below, and I will see you guys for whatever video I do next.